one of the things you guys brought up was even if maybe my buyer is supposed to have insurance or maybe my shipper is supposed to have insurance, have you guys run into those situations where maybe they don't, where they've said, okay, we'll take it on and then cargo, then there's damage. And then all of a sudden maybe they didn't have enough cargo coverage or the coverage was inadequate or they didn't have any at all. And, and, and kind of walk us through what, what could happen there and if there's any recourse or how that works. Yes, that, that's a great question, actually. Um, and, and if the other party is supposed to be responsible for insurance and you've got some reservations about it, you're concerned about whether it's going to be sufficient or whether it's going to be placed at all, um, it is possible to, to do what we call a contingency insurance. And they would simply reach out to Scarborough and you would be able to insure it on a contingency basis, which means that in the event the other party's insurance was not placed or was not adequate, this insurance would come into play. It's clearly a following form and it only would come into play in the event that the other party did not do their due diligence as it relates to the insurance. Okay, perfect. Right. So, and Adam, I'm just going to, I'm sorry, I was just going to add to that real quickly. Um, it's real important here to, to add that um, cargo insurance is, is not a homogenous product. Um, these, these cargo insurance policies are not all the same. Um, they, they will vary from, from insurer to insurer. Um, and it's really impossible. It's, it's not like a homeowner's insurance policy or a, an auto policy that you might have uh, in your personal business um, where the terms and conditions are going to be the same from, from carrier to carrier. Uh, the, the, the terms and conditions of, of shippers interest cargo insurance policies vary drastically. And there's really no way to know um, if you're relying on someone else to purchase the insurance. There's, there's really no way to know what it is that they purchase. So, again, the, the, the first priority, what we always strongly recommend, is that you, if you're not controlling the insurance in a particular transaction now, that you uh, consider renegotiating uh, those terms of sale uh, with your client so that you can uh, actually manage the insurance in that transaction and know exactly what it is that you're buying and, and know for sure that it's going to answer a claim in the way that you expect it to be answered. And then sort of the fallback to that, again, is what Jenny had mentioned as far as buying that contingency insurance that, that in effect will, will top up uh, without knowing uh, what the other party has purchased. Um, what this contingency insurance does is it says, okay, um, this will be your, your minimum coverage. We will, we will give you coverage up to uh, this level so that if the other party purchases an inferior insurance product, you can be, and, and it doesn't answer a claim, you can be certain that uh, you, you'll have at least this, this amount of coverage. It's, it's the less efficient way to go, but if there's not an opportunity to renegotiate those terms of sale, it, it is an option.